Welcome to Android Authority on Air, the original Android Hangout show on Google+. I'm Derek Ross, and this week I'm joined by fellow Android Authority writers and YouTube sensation Urs, <laughs> Joshua Vergara and Christopher Wook, as well as Jonathan Franklin, returning guest and returning longtime guest, Dan Charlton. What's up, guys? How you doing? Good to be here. Thanks for having us. Hey, what's going on, everyone? How's it going? You know, Wookie, I love your backdrop. I mean, I got the androids in the back here, you know, my little Google Android shrine, if you will. And then I see your badass guitars in the back. Like, you're, you're doing it right, you know what I mean? Like, that is a, that is a backdrop to have. I, I love it. It's actually just the background of my office. Uh, like, any of the videos I do on YouTube, it's just the cameras there and facing the other way. And then everyone here is like, you have an office? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where the magic comes from, his video reviews and his articles that he writes. And, and Josh, we see your, your backdrops, your, your uh, new camera you got for, uh, you're going to Mobile World Congress, aren't you? Yes, I am. Uh, I decided, you know, I needed to up my game because it's going to be just three days of madness. So I picked up, uh, picked up a new camera for the trip. Very nice, very nice. And uh, as you guys can see, Scott is not joining us this evening. Uh, he's MIA. Hope all is well. Anyway, so let's, uh, what are we going to talk about this week? Well, we normally go into um, app reviews, talk about you know what, what's popular the past week, what new apps you know, came out, what apps got updated, all, all the same old dance every week. But since the Super Bowl is tomorrow, we're going to start out by talking about you know some apps on Android to help you stay up to date uh, with the Super Bowl if you're not able to watch, you're out and about, or if you need something to do while you're watching the Super Bowl. Uh, then we're going to hit some rumors because this, this week had all sorts of rumors all over the place for various upcoming devices, rumor devices. It may or may not be illegal to do certain things with your mobile devices in the U.S. now. And uh, We're going to talk about some ecosystem stuff, a little bit of rooting and ramen as usual, and Dan's going to yell about something about patents as usual because that's what Dan does, and we love him for that. So uh, Super Bowl, uh, what are you guys doing for the Super Bowl, Dan? you have any big plans? Uh, not really, no. I'm going to go watch the game with some friends. I don't know that I'd really call it a Super Bowl party, just me and several friends I have that all live in one house together, so just hanging out, really. All right. How about you, John? Any big uh, foosball plans? Well, for the first part of the Super Bowl, I'll actually be partaking in some of these apps because I have to work until 8 o'clock, and then I'll uh, catch the rest of it when I get to the house. So. All right. How about you, Josh? Uh, any big Super Bowl plans uh, for tomorrow? Uh, mostly staying home, but uh, aside from watching the game, just two words, wing, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to probably get like a 50-pack and just go nuts on the food. You're going for the Atomics? Um, maybe like five. <laughs> hey, you gotta have you know you gotta have wings. Uh, in, in a Super Bowl, you know I'm a big fan of wings. How about you, Wookie? What are you doing? You eating wings? Um, maybe. I literally <laughs> actually didn't know the Super Bowl was tomorrow until you just said that. <laughs> well, I don't even know who's playing. A true techie. <laughs> you know what? I I will have to agree. Uh. Well, since we had to we reschedule the show uh, from our normal night Thursday night, I was talking to the guy saying, "Hey, should we do it? You know, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night?" And my boy Johnny Frank here, he's like, "Well, Sunday is a Super Bowl." I was like, "Huh? I guess it is." Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm not a huge Super Bowl fan. I, I always, uh, you know, you gotta watch, you know, for the commercials, right? You know, I love the Super Bowl commercials. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not a big football fan, and I never have been. I always played other sports uh, in the fall, such as soccer, so I, I never really got into football. But uh, football. I will, I will pay attention a little bit, you know, so I can be a man and talk about it, for, you know, from time to time. Um, so, uh, so let's get into some some apps that those of you that care about the Super Bowl. Well, what can you do with the the mobile apps, uh, John? Well, in my case, I work on Sunday and used to work on Saturday, so a lot of kind of, a lot of times I had to improvise and kind of keep track of the games from apps. So you really got a lot of good apps out there that let you set up your own favorite teams and watch live feeds kind of on the go. And uh, the first one and definitely the most popular one is going to be ESPN Score Center. And of course, if you got an ESPN account, it's going to sync up all of your teams and uh, give you customized alerts. And uh, from there, you can watch any kind of 
live you know game feed like you would in a web browser directly from the application and you can get uh, notifications straight from the app and you know get it on a widget too if that's your thing and uh, they it was not long ago that, that app got completely redesigned so it's pretty nice the second one is a uh, CBS Sportcaster and uh, it's pretty similar to ESPN in that you can customize your own news feeds and your sports teams but it'll also pull in a Twitter feed of relevant commentators during the game that you can kind of keep track of the if you're not in a place where you can listen to it through radio or watch it any kind of way then uh, the commentators pretty much stay on top of the game in that depth sounds like to the Hmm? That sounds like a pretty neat app. So you, you, it, it's just a feed of of commentators, people on Twitter, you know, talking about uh, talking about the game. You know that it, it gives you cool. both sides too, and it gives you their opinions on even if a penalty is about to be overturned, they're they're whining about it. So it, <laughs> always you, you whining can, on Twitter. You can get right in the action right with them. Uh, there's another one called Thuz T H U U Z Sports, and you know, all, all these apps kind of have a common theme where you can customize your teams and get push notifications. But uh, this one's a little bit different in that it ranks your games by the level of excitement. So if you got a team that's just getting destroyed and blown out, then it's going to rank pretty low, and it's going to tell you that it's a pretty boring game to watch where a uh, really close match, a really exciting game is going to get boosted up to the top. And uh, you, know, you know, John, with a, with Thuz Sports, uh, I'm gonna interrupt you here. I actually talked to their app developer uh, recently. Uh, the Thuz Sports app comes on the Hisense Pulse, uh, one of the newer uh, Google TV set top box devices. And <laughs> whenever I wrote my review on the on it, for some reason I called it instead of Thuz, I, I called it Thugs. <laughs> so they, you know, they're like, you know, you know. We, we, you know, we're not entirely hardcore. You know, we're not thugs, but you know, thanks for referring to us as that. Or he emailed me saying something like that. And I had to go back and edit the article. And uh, I've always called—I don't know—it's it's been in my head ever since I saw saw the app. You know, a long time ago, I've always called it thugs, and and <laughs> apparently I was wrong all this time. I felt kind of embarrassed, but hey, flattering for them too. Yeah, I know, flattering, right? I thought I thought you guys were, you know, were you know, uh, we're hardcore. You know, you're thugs. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the good thing about that, I, it does make sense for Google TV because it does give you, uh, if you're on, you know, whatever your network provider, you can actually put that into the app and it'll find a game for you if it finds a exciting game that's, you know, it's really good if you're kind of a casual fan that just really likes to see the really close matches and the ones that kind of have those down to the last second kind of finishes. It's a good app to kind of really keep a heads up for those kind of games. That's a gangster. <laughs> Does it on the Hisense connect into TV so you can jump straight to like the live game if you get that channel? That's a good question. I haven't. That's used. a good question. I will actually try that out just to say that I did it. Report back. I'm throwing it in the comments. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, do, is there any other? Uh, is, there, is there an official app for the Super Bowl, John? You know, an official there, NFL sponsored um, app. I think the official one is just NFL uh, 2012. It wasn't really one of the better apps, and, and most of these apps on here also let you track any, any kind of sports that you could possibly want to watch. Um, there is uh, what used to be Score Mobile. It's called the Score now, and it's pretty similar to the rest of them. It just got a hollow UI update and different navigation, but it's good for lightweight. There is one, though, called uh, Super Bowl 47 Guide, and it's provided by Verizon Wireless, but you can, you know, get it on anything. And it's actually for people that are touring in New Orleans, and uh, it lets you find events and local restaurants and nightlife and points of interest, and you can create calendar events or bookmark it. So it's it's good for the people traveling there. All right. All right, so there, there's a handful of different ways to, you know, find out, get your sports information on Android, obviously. So these are a few choices. Uh, if you have something else that you use to stay in tune with, you know, sports or the Super Bowl or f football, uh, you know, let us know in the comments, and uh, we'll be sure to add it to the list. Uh, this, one, this one we're throwing in there, just if somebody wants to watch the live stream, is firstrow1.eu, because you can literally watch the streaming video online. Okay, firstrow1.eu. I'll, I'll put it in the comments if anybody wants to get it. But, uh, okay. 
Have any of you ever used, or I guess really even heard of, Google's official sports app? I remember it. It's called Scoreboard, I think. Mm -hmm. They pretty much deprecate the teams you want to follow, and it'll keep you up to date on it. I don't know if anybody's. It's it's not a particularly popular app from Google, considering some of their other ones, like you know Maps, for example. No, I'm I'm so I'm I'm curious what Google Now will do. So let's say you you had a, a couple different football teams in your uh, you know in your Google Now sports card configuration. Even if one of your teams doesn't make it to the Super Bowl, will you get a Super Bowl score just because it's football? Yeah. It yeah, you probably will. I, you... I guess we'll, I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, I guess it'd be best with Google now if you could sort of pick sports that you care about, right? Like, mm-hmm. I don't necessarily follow one team in football, but I care about pro football. Well, and and actually, Google now and sports related uh, this week. Yeah, uh, randomly, people started noticing that you can actually put college sports teams in there. Oh, you can Pre- finally. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Previously, you were only able to put you know pro pro teams in there. So if you were you know a, a, you followed collegiate sports, you, you know you were uh, not so uh, not so happy. But right now, I have Penn State basketball listed in there, and I had the Ohio go score pop up the other night. So yeah, I was. Now, now, one thing is I couldn't actually go into the sports card, Dan, configuration and add my own team. I, I had to – you remember when Google Now first uh, came out, you yeah. actually had to search for your team and then it became yeah. a card? So that's how you have to do it now. Mm-hmm. I tried to add it by the card or by the uh, card setup under set, yeah, settings, yeah. and I searched for Penn State and it didn't work. But So then I went to a Google search, I typed in Penn State basketball, and then – I looked at my phone and, huh, it says the Iowa games tonight. You know, so it. Oh, okay. So try, so try it the old-fashioned way. That that worked for me. So there must have been a server-side patch uh, update uh, in the past week. But uh, so those of you that, uh, like I said, like uh, collegiate sports, congratulations! You are now able to get those card notifications. Look up Spartan basketball. There you go. So uh, let's talk about some device rumors. We had a lot this week. Uh, you know. More about more rumors about the Galaxy S4 from Samsung, you know the HTC M7. Uh, some more information about that. Motorola X phone, you know, and Qualcomm, and, and all sorts of stuff. So uh, let's talk about the big guy. I mean, they're all big, but I think a lot of people are excited for the upcoming Samsung Galaxy S4. Um, the most recent tidbit of information about this phone says that. An internal contest by a mobile retailer in New Zealand, one of their flyers from their contest got out, and it said that the winner of this contest is going is going to get their a Galaxy S4, and the contest just happens to end on April eighth. So if the contest ends on April eighth, and it says the winner is going to get a handset, chances are it's going to be launched right around then. And, and that kind of corresponds with the previous rumor saying that it was going to be a, available April 15th, the week of April 15th. So somewhere around there. So I, I would definitely put that as, you know, uh, second week of, uh, of April, it's definitely going to be available just because, you know, we, we've seen that a, a few different times now. Yeah. And like I, like I said, pre, you know, previous leaks said that there's going to be a mobile unpacked event here in the United States in March which will announce the phone coming out a few weeks later sometime in April. I don't know. I think there's reason to doubt the the advertisement that was dropped as well, just given the language. It didn't even say Galaxy S4. It just said Samsung S4. Well, I call it the S3 right now and the S2. Right, but there's an implied G in front of that. You don't write it like that. I don't know. I, I you write SGS three or SGS two or Samsung GS two. I yeah, but I hear people all the time say, "Hey, what phone do you have?" Oh, I have the S three. You know, that's just yeah. You also hear people say they have a Droid when they're holding a I don't know <laughs> LG something. <laughs> made a Droid ever. Well, we'll see. Obviously, what happens in the next few weeks, but I'd like to think that because it's a mobile. Uh, Flyer that people that are in the know, you know, knew that it was implied. Oh, I think the timing is realistic. I'm, I'm just 
questioning whether or not the people who wrote the advertisement are in the know or whether or not the people who wrote the advertisement are just guessing that that's when it's going to come out. Because I think that's, that's, I think that's, that's somebody else is saying it's going to come out. That, that, I think that's, that's sort of what it is, to be honest, because probably the, the timing corresponds, yes, and then in April we should be seeing something like a Galaxy S4 or something big sure. from Samsung coming out. But whoever made that advertisement just... No, knew nothing probably that's that's what i think like yeah that's just have... this this is a corroboration this is just everybody else's speculation leading to more stuff based on that speculation you know what uh, that does make sense because i've seen people give away devices that aren't even announced when they are coming out yet you know hey we're going to give this away you know like huh it's not even know, available yet whenever we can get our hands on one <laughs> yeah yeah so so that yeah, that's entirely possible. I I will give you that. They are just playing along with the rumor, saying, you know what, we are going to give one away. But I'd like to think with the amount of rumors we've been hearing about, such as the screen size, you know, and and and, and the processor. Yeah, that but this it, time last year we heard a ton of absurd rumors about how the Galaxy S3 was going to have a transparent and flexible display, and it was going to be edgeless, and it was going to be magnificent, and it was going to be the most extraordinary thing since sliced bread. And you know what? They sold a whole hell of a lot of phones. I'm not saying it's a bad phone. I'm just saying that we heard all of these ridiculous rumors and everybody got their hopes up that it was going to be this, like, magnificent manna from heaven. And, of course, it was just, you know, a cell phone. There's a point where... Right, like, it's just a cell phone. Well, my argument a year ago was that they didn't sell us the specs, Dan. They sold us the S package. They sold us software. Their marketing yeah. was all about S this, you. S that, S this, and S that. Yeah, made for And, and, and I think and they're other. building their brand that way, and I think they're, oh, they're going to do that even further with the S4. They're going to come out there and you know move more towards you know their S platform, if you want to call it that. That's my thought on it. So, moving on to more rumors... HTC is going to have a event here February 19th. Interesting enough, they're going to have one in London and in New York City. Usually you don't see two events happening on the same day in different cities, different yeah. continents, you know, announcing the same device. So maybe I, I don't I don't know. Well, what I mean there's the M7 as well as two other new devices, right Dan? Yeah. They also have <coughs> excuse me. They also have an M4 and a G2. Um, the M7 has been pretty well leaked in terms of, of what it's supposed to look like. The M4 though is looking more like the uh, the one S replacement, the sort of middle of the road one. It's supposed to have a 4.3 inch 720 display, which is still extremely pixel dense. It's probably I don't know the math, but it's probably pretty close to the 1085 inch ones in terms of density. So you aren't losing a whole lot on that other than just physical real estate. Um, it's supposed to have a 1.2 gigahertz dual core Qualcomm, what I would assume is an S4 Pro processor. So that would be a, a dual core crate, not quite second generation, but almost there paired with the Adreno 320 GPU. It's so the same GPU that's in the the quad cores, um, but that's I mean that's speculation at this point. And then a 13 yeah. megapixel camera uh, that's supposed to also be in the M7 paired with the image sense sense chip, I would assume. And then the G2 is supposed to be the small or the you know the smaller one, the the budget end, a three and a half inch HVGA screen on a one gigahertz processor. So. Certainly a very budget level phone there. You know what, and you know that does make sense to have additional f phones out there besides just the M7 because you know there was three versions of the you know the one series initially, so they're going to sure. have to replace them all. And and unlike say certain other platform manufacturers, HTC wants to compete everywhere. They want to be able to sell phones in China. They want to be able to sell phones in India. They want to be able to sell phones in Africa where people aren't going to pay $650 for the phone. They're going to pay $50 for a phone and they're going to get whatever features you can get for $50 for a phone because that's what they can afford. 
Yeah. And at least if that's true with the mid range, I mean, I've had a chance now to look at those dual core S4s, uh, the Snapdragons, a few times. Oh, yeah. And they actually, they do really well. Oh, sure. They're great processors. The new, the new budget crate processors are great processors. They're yeah. not slouches. Right? Like, Qualcomm's just going to eat up the low end market with those. So, I'm still. I'm still a little confused about this, the, the the M7, you know, we've seen pictures of it. It, it looks like a droid DNA. Exactly. What oh, we, sure. it, it looks like the DNA, and there's a rumor still that it might come to Verizon. That just does not make, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that rumor. That just doesn't make any sense to me. No, I, I totally agree. I don't think that Verizon's going to have two phones that close uh, from the same manufacturer because they don't want to confuse people more than they already have with everything else. I don't know. I could see them going for it just because HTC might want to sever itself from that droid line, so to speak, just to roll out an M7 on every U.S. carrier. What if Verizon has it on the slate to do essentially what they did with the DNA where AT&T and all get the 1X? And then Verizon wants to rebadge it with a, you know, basically a version two, with slightly better hardware, and throw it out at Christmas time so they can make a ton of money on it. Yeah, I could see Verizon holding off and doing a Droid sort of offset from the M, mm-hmm. the, their primary line of ones or M's or whatever. To so call it the uh, the Droid DNA two, and it'll yeah, be the, yeah. it'll be the M seven. <laughs> yeah, I think the Thunderbolt has pretty much lost its legacy at this point. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? We're going to talk about that right now because you brought it up. John, the Thunderbolt, 16 months after ICS release, this past week, Verizon rolled out the Android 4.04 update for that ancient beast. (laughs) You know, Android 4.0 has been out for 15, 16 months. Verizon doesn't care. They're getting it to the Thunderbolt. You know, a year and a half, (laughs) you know, they're, they're rolling it out. Where's my jelly bean variety? I just want to point out, Derek, that I supported Android 4.0 on Thunderbolt before CyanogenMod did. Ooh. I, I had your, an incredible play. And long before HTC and Verizon did. On your uh, your team at ROM, team at Kernel? Kernels, yeah. All right. Well, it's a 16-month-old phone. That's I mean, if people got it when it first... More than 16 months old. Oh, is it more? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just saying, sixteen months ago, Android four point zero was announced. Oh, so, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. The Thunderbolt is actually Verizon's very first LTE phone. Yep, it's about. Oh, yeah, you're right. Boy. So it's it's what two first years old? Two thousand eleven, four months ish. Yeah, it's so it, it's about two it, years old. So, you know, right around now is the time where people were getting upgrades anyway. So, they're going to be getting a Jelly Bean phone. But hey, you. You got ice. If you're not eligible yet, you're getting an ice cream sandwich on that phone. All right. So, so back back to rumors. Sorry about that. Uh, all right, I want to talk about the Motorola X phone because we had we had some juicy tidbits of info come out about this phone this week. So, for those of you that aren't aware, the X phone was originally brought up from the Wall Street Journal. Eh, we'll just say two months ago or so, saying that. Google was going to be working on an X phone, and I'm sorry, no, it is Google. Motorola slash Google was working on a, an X phone and an X tablet, and immediately everyone was like, "Oh my God, shut up and take my money!" <laughs> you know. So, uh, anytime we hear rumors about this, it makes us Android fans a little giddy inside. Um, so, a little, a little background on this before we get to the rumor on the. Q4 earnings call last week, Larry Page said that phones shouldn't go splat when you drop them, and he also said that phones should last through the entire day. So what does that mean? Well, phones should be, you know, not break easily, and they should have a big-ass battery. So following up what he said, this past week we had some new rumors about the X phone. we Heard rumors saying that it's going to have a Kevlar chassis, which obviously would help it not go splat. Um, there's been previous rumors that Google was looking into like ceramics or something with a bend or a bendable or 
flexible type display. So you know, we didn't hear anything about that this week. But we did hear about a Kevlar chassis, um, and, and we also heard that it's going to have a huge battery. Think you know, like Razer Max style here, like a, a huge battery. Interesting enough, it's going to have a really good camera. Supposedly, we we heard that it's going to have a, a Sony camera and a 4.8 inch screen, a micro SD card, quad core processor, and stock Android. Now that that's the coolest thing, you know, in my opinion, stock Android. So, my question to you guys is: is is it, is this a shut up and take my money device? You know, do you believe these rumors to be true? What you know, what are your thoughts on this? If these rumors become, let's say, rumors, that they are, they are going to become true, I would say yes, because I've been waiting for a long time. Ever since Google got uh, acquired uh, Motorola, I should say, Motorola Mobility, Mobility, and what I've been looking to see out of them just hasn't materialized until now. And everything that you said, like coming from, like, say, me and Wookie, we know that people hate it when there's a great phone out there and it's missing key features like batteries, expandable memory, something stuff like that. Motorola has proven already that they can have all of that. The Razer Max, to me, was a great phone. That thing could last for days. And if that's going to be in this phone, expandable memory, big screen, stock Android, I think that's a really big deal. Plus, people go nuts for those Sony uh, camera sensors. People yeah. love Sony cameras. Yeah. Dude, they make really good cameras. I think... <clears throat> The Nexus kind of sets the software bar as a reference design. And to me, Motorola needs to be Google's way of showing OEMs that you can be competitive without making the software look like garbage, basically. They need to show, throw a, a premium hardware device on the market that says, look, we'll give you everything that the S4 has. We'll give you everything that you know HTC has to put out. And we're going to do it with better looking software, with faster updates, and with a better overall user experience, and just blow them out of the water and force them to catch up. Yeah. I mean, I think it's still important to note that there's a difference between releasing the device running stock Android and releasing a device that is part of AOSP. Yeah. You can release a device that has customized proprietary hardware or software on it that is still running stock Android. You put a customized camera app that still runs against the stock framework. You put in a customized calendar or email or whatever other applications you want that still run against the stock framework, and you have a device that you can pretty much support from any Android-based platform with easy updates where all you have to do is just roll out app updates. Uh, quick, quick, quick question for all you guys. Sorry. Um, no, no, uh, if uh, Motorola is coming out with this, or rather, Let's say Motorugal is coming out with uh, coming Motorugal. out with this thought, or something. Yeah. Um, what did, what were you guys' thoughts on Moto Blur? Do you think this is going to be the death of Moto Blur if this is the trend from now on with Motorola and Google teaming up? I think it'll depend on the market. If this gets traction in a way that Motorola really hasn't been able to outside of the the Razer series on Verizon, then I think yeah, it'll start a trend that they'll they'll stick with. But I don't think if it doesn't get traction, I think they'll continue to explore other opportunities. They've been moving closer to stock as far as the look and feel anyway. I don't think it's that big of a change for them to really go all out stock because they really haven't put a ton of customizations on top of it aside from some image assets here and here. Mm -hmm. Nothing really, really major. And they they do have some useful stuff like uh, smart actions. You know, I... I'm hoping that this does come to fruition. I hope it comes to Motorola's longtime friend, Verizon. Uh, I hope that it comes with an unlocked bootloader. If not, I'm sure somebody in the Android community, you know, will make that 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 problem uh, go away. But but I'm hoping that it, you know we don't have to deal with that. Um, I I'm excited. I will buy it. The moment that it's announced if these features are true. You know, some people are saying, oh, it's a 4.8 inch screen and, you know, the trend today is five inches. Well, you know what? Two tenths of an inch with no bezel or a, a very, very small bezel is going to be fine. Uh, you're not going to, you're not going to hate, you know? <laughs> so, so we'll see. 
obviously uh, in a few months, rumors you know, may come true, they may not. We'll find out come Google I.O., I assume. That's when this is supposed to be targeted. Now, I'm going to add one more thing to the rumor mill that I think the X-Phone is real. And something to back it up is this past week, Motorola Mobility posted a job opening on LinkedIn for a manager, a product manager for the Motorola X-Phone. And then, and then the job posting went away. So either someone at Motorola is trolling the hell out of everybody, <laughs> you know, posting a job, a job for an unannounced device and then taking it down, or the phone is definitely real and it's coming. So I, I, I would highly doubt them to be trolling the world. So, I think that would be great, though, if they were. Yes, that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. R right now, uh, right now, they're sitting there. You know, it's a Saturday night. They're all out. You know, reading all the Android blogs. Uh, you know, and news blogs all over the world, toasting and laughing. And then we told them it was an actual job position. You know, and <laughs> uh, I, yeah, um, yeah, uh, that could happen, but but I doubt it. Yeah. So we're I'm really buying one. Praise for Max. So so what do I know? So Wookie, you have a Verizon. You're on Verizon. Uh, yes. Um, Josh, you're on Verizon, and John, you're on Verizon. Is it if if these things come out, are you 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 buying it out of contract right away? Oh, I don't know if I want to be tied down to a contract right away at that point. To be honest. Um, well, I'm saying out of contract. Like if you know if it's. Whatever the you know retail price is, uh, would you would you if if you're not ready for an upgrade or you know would, would you buy it? Do you I mean might. with Verizon or to switch carriers? Well, Josh, well Josh is already on Verizon, and I'm saying I'm on it, Verizon it, as well. And yeah, exactly. So the phone comes out on Verizon. You aren't ready for an upgrade yet. You or, you know would you spend six hundred bucks if it costs six hundred bucks off contract on it? I, I usually never buy phones off contract, to be honest. Um, the only one that I would would be the Nexus 4 for obvious reasons. But, yeah, if, if, if it was that good, though, I might try to find a deal. Maybe find someone on eBay who used it for a week and then <laughs> grab it that way. Uh, well, I have the DNA right here. I would get rid of that in a heartbeat for the Motorola X phone uh, if these specs and features are, are all true. And you know, Motorola makes great radios and great hardware. That's already a proven fact. So I, I'm excited. I and I hope it. I it's hope it happens. It's almost certainly going to be running a Qualcomm radio. What's that, Dan? I said it's almost certainly going to be running with a Qualcomm radio. So what you're saying is AOSP support uh, for custom ROMs is going to be a big pain in the butt. But you know what? If it runs stock Android, I don't need a custom ROM. The good thing with Motorola is just antenna design. Well. They do yeah, and Samsung there. AOSP isn't going to be that difficult because the Nexus 4 also runs a Qualcomm radio. All right, I'm so probably got the same processor probably clocked up to 1.7 gigahertz. As so we'll since we're talking about Qualcomm, Dan, your your favorite chipset developer, let's talk about a leak from them this past week. So somebody got a hold of some documents they weren't supposed to, and then Qualcomm said, hey, take those down. And so there's, there's nothing like, you know, to confirm a rumor when takedown requests <laughs> are, are served. So uh, anything interesting from their, their uh, roadmap? Well, I mean, things that we can kind of already guess. They, say, they said they would have a test device in Q2 2013 for the unveiling of Android Key Lime Pi. Um, that kind of makes sense because... Google I.O. is going to be in Q2. Chances are a new version of Android will be announced. K is the next uh, letter in the alphabet. It's already been rumored to be Key Lime Pi multiple times. So having it come out of Google I.O., all those stars align correctly, it looks like it's going to happen. So what I'm most intrigued about is they said they were going. They were going to have a device running Key Lime Pi. So is that just their internal test device, or are they going to be testing a new device to launch on their new processor running Key Lime Pi? So what device are they talking about? Are they talking about a new Nexus device, or you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm interested. I suspect they're talking about dozens of devices. Could they be talking about the Motorola 
X phone, Dan. I, I think that's possible. I think they're probably talking about that and tons of other devices because the new Snapdragon 6 and 800 are supposed to be hitting the market around that time. So, And they've already said they've got, what, like 150 partners like devices lined up for those. Something ridiculous like that. So yeah, I'm sure they're talking about not just one device, but tons of them. I'm sure they'll probably also update their mobile phone reference. I can't remember the weird acronym they use for their phone reference device. They recently <laughs> updated their tablet, and they usually do their phone in the spring. Yeah. Uh, what's what's the time frame for the PDK now? Three months ahead of a final software release, I think. When they give, they basically giving vendors like Qualcomm time to get the platform ready. developer kit. Yeah, it's usually between one and a half and three months between when the the chip. Oh, I mean, there's, there's a chip likely that they're going to have something. Phone makers actually have a phone ready. Yeah, I mean, they probably <coughs> at least some form of code for. Oh yeah, no, no, they're seeding them already out to to distribute or to OEMs. All right, so let's talk about uh, another another rumor, speculation. You know, it's pretty much confirmed at this point. Uh, a white Nexus Four showed up originally on Picasa because that's where Android phones go to leak all over the place. Once they pretty much come to Picasa, you know they're real. <laughs> I mean, that unfortunately that that's how it goes. But uh, it was only one picture. Now, then the, two days later, a Vietnamese website posted a dozen. Nexus 4 photos from various angles, close-ups and everything. So it's pretty, it's real at this point. So my question is, is why are we seeing a white Nexus 4 when the black one can't even stay in stock? Yeah. Anybody, anybody have any thoughts about that? It's a little ridiculous. They can't keep the one they've got in stock when they're planning another one. On the other hand, I think that it shows they're planning on ramping up their production. At very least, to bring out another color means you know more supply of some kind, if nothing else. That's what I was thinking too. I wonder if um, LG uh, is putting together just a massive amount of devices, black or white, and they're all just going to come out at once at some point. Yeah. You know, now, I hate, and it wasn't just LG or you know Nexus devices. Uh, you know, Samsung did it uh, before. Uh, you know, almost every manufacturer does this. They release the the standard color and then a few months later they release the cool colors, you know, the, the you know they release the whites, the blues, the reds or whatever. So what the hell are you supposed to do for the people that pre-ordered and bought it day one? You know what and, and what if they wanted a cool color? What if they wanted a, a white nexus? You know? Yeah. So, what, so what are they supposed to do? Are they supposed to try to sell their black one, you know, on Swappa or eBay and then go out and buy a brand new and and end up probably losing some money? I mean, I, why can't you release a white one and a black one at the same time? I I don't understand. Here's the great that. thing about the white Nexus. Once you've got it, you can paint it any color you want. <laughs> <laughs> you already have it home. So, it so, is, so they need to be selling a Nexus with, with a black uh, paint kit or a red paint kit. You know? <laughs> yeah, they'll just – no, you can buy the paint separately for it's 79 or 85 or so. You can change it every day. It might be hard to paint all the sparkly glass, though. Well, you know, I'm sure you could take it to a Nexus customization shop, John, and they'll they'll get it done for you. That that'll or be a new one. Some glitter, <laughs> sprinkle it on there. Then yeah, see, what, yeah. Wookie's gonna Wookie's gonna start this up in New York. He's gonna file for articles of incorporation tomorrow. Nexus we'll right Sparkle. There. It's already done. It's already done. <laughs> we'll do it right there for you in the subway. <laughs> <laughs> it took me like twenty bucks and uh, maybe fifteen minutes worth of work to replace the entire outside shell of my Galaxy Nexus to. You know, polish it up, and why can't they just sell an entire shell kit and be done with it, and make it easy for the users to swap it out? You know? That is exactly that's exactly what I was thinking. Am I? I feel like the only one sometimes that misses those days when you would get a phone and you can go to like an Asian market somewhere and they have like the entire shell <laughs> available in different colors and you can customize your phone so easily. I miss that so much. Um, honestly, I I'm I'm happy that. This white Nexus is coming out. I honestly sometimes I prefer white phones over to, over the black ones. In this case, not so much, but I like that they have a choice. I would love to see them come out with more colors, but I, I kind of miss the days when you would just be able to pop the back off and then place it with something else, and all of a sudden you have a different looking phone. Yeah, I mean, I get that you can't just pop it out and change it, but it does seem stupid that they release them separately, right? Like, look at Apple 
as everybody always does, right? Like they release white and black at the same time in all of the different size variants all at once, rolled out, done, one shot. Right? You know, like, and so that's something Apple's with, doing right. Yeah, with Android, you get the black 16 gigabyte model, and then three months later, you get the 32 gigabyte model, and then 32, three months later, you get the white one, and then three months later, you get the white 32 gigabyte one. And then you get the, the Max HD LTE 4G, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, so let's move on to some devices that we actually know about instead of just speculating. Uh, you know, Dan, you had an interesting tidbit about the Asus uh, PadPhone 2. Yeah, so the Asus Pad Phone 2, which isn't even on sale in the United States, it's only in, I think, just Japan and Taiwan, um, has sold nearly 1 million units, which is roughly the same number of Surface RTs that Microsoft has sold to distributors. Not to end users, just to distributors. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Man, Ouch. loves me loves me some Surface RT, you know? It, <laughs> yeah, so how's that for a unified mobile <laughs> computing <laughs> platform, Microsoft? And it uh, costs probably uh, right around the same amount. Yeah, to buy the, the tablet like holding thing and the dock for it and the phone, I think, is still less than a Surface. All right, so uh, the Sprint Galaxy Nexus, it's not dead yet. It received... Android 4.2.1, the latest version, the up-to-date version of Android this past week. Um, yeah, then we get to its its ugly cousin, the uh, the Verizon variant, which you didn't receive an update this past week, but the phone did reach end of life on Verizon. Uh, you you can't buy it anymore, so that's that's which some news. Which Come and get it. Verizon. Come and get it. <laughs> Which also means Verizon can pretend it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, exactly. Verizon doesn't have to update it. They, can, they don't sell it. Um, I would assume, fingers crossed, confidence high, that an official over-the-air update would be coming soon. It, generally, Sprint and you know the Verizon variants are not too far off when it comes to updating each other. Uh, I wouldn't yeah. hold my breath. Yeah, but yeah, don't go snorkeling. Uh, you know, like Dan said, uh, if Verizon forgets about it, just everyone, just get rooting. Honestly, just get get custom ROMs. Just get going. Like honestly, it's yeah, the best one to do it for. It and you're right. You look at it. Uh, you know, Josh, you look at the phone and it roots itself. It's so easy because yeah, it's an access device. Words. Type three words and you're done. Yep. But but not everybody can do that, nor should everybody do that. You know what I mean? You shouldn't have to do that. That's you where... Could, it, and yet, you chose to slave yourself to Verizon. You know what? I have to slave myself to Verizon, Dan. I live in the middle of nowhere. We only have Verizon here. Or I could have two GGs now. They're usually interested in people willing to privately host their tower. Yeah, okay, yeah. so, so uh, AT&T or T-Mobile, do you want to put a tower in my backyard? I'll Make service it. They might be willing. Yeah, I will, I will. And they might pay you for it, too. I know they do. Yeah. Or at least pay your phone. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and go ahead and put it. You know, it'll, my, it's like, it'll be like a jungle gym for my son to play on. He'll be able to exactly. climb the tower. You know, exactly. Like, There's you know, no like, downside here. Yeah, I know. You know, and it, that reminds me of that Simpsons episode from years ago when they put a cell phone tower in Lisa's bedroom because she liked technology. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember that episode, but yeah, I, I used to like the Simpsons a lot back in the day. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, so Verizon, like we said, updated the Thunderbolt uh, this past week, and they they sent out an update for the three year old, nearly three year old HTC Droid Incredible, coming August. I'm sorry, coming uh, April 29th or April 27th. I, I don't remember which. The phone is officially three years old, so you know another couple months. You're Verizon. Sure. The yeah. Incredible and not the Incredible 2 or the Incredible 4G LTE. The Incredible. Yeah, the hey, I'm celebrating over here. I yeah, got my so, Incredible. So, so, so <laughs> Josh, fire it up else. and get your over the air update. I did it as well. The Incredible. Aims over the air update aims to get this lesson random reboots. 
which is not, good. Not eliminate, just lessen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not making any promises here, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're not making any promises. <laughs> but who? Th- Okay, I'm sorry. Who who still uses the, the Incredible as their? I'm sure some people do, but uh, a guy at work uh, that works with me does. So I mean, they had there obviously has to be a lot of people still on the original Incredible, or because they, they pushed out an update for it. Well, yeah, a just a little, just a little tidbit about me. This is honestly one of my favorite phones ever. Like this was one of the most sturdy phones I've ever owned. And oh, it's still I, really great. I just sold uh, one on Swappa the other day. It was actually my wife's Incredible, uh, and I had an Incredible as well. We loved those phones. Yeah. So yeah, um, I, they're they're great phones. People are still people are still interested. In them. I sold mine for uh, forty bucks, I think. Yeah, until like a week ago, mine was in use by a coworker of mine who had lost his phone. Yeah, the Incredible is the Incredible. Spot. You know, my Incredible didn't run Dan's uh, team at Colonel. Every it wouldn't even boot with his Colonel, but my wife's uh, phone liked his Colonel though. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't know why my I think it had to do with AMOLED versus SLCD. Yeah, that could have. Yeah, that's right. Because Verizon, the 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 original ones came with uh, AMOLED, yeah, right? And then out. they then they had the SLC. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's move on to a, a Dan topic here. Dan, <laughs> a few days ago, it became technically illegal in the United States to carry or unlock your phones. Yes. You want, so so what does that mean? You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So the Digital Millennium Copyright Act basically says you can't do much of anything that could potentially lead to you illegally downloading copyrighted material or otherwise transcoding, stealing, transferring the media format, in any way really acquiring other than what the MPAA and RIAA tell you is acceptable. Um, But because that's such a ridiculously broad standard, they allow the Library of Congress to dictate exceptions every year, or excuse me, every three years. And so exceptions are for things like uh, saying it's okay to have books on tape for deaf people because every three years the lobbies for disabled people come and remind the Library of Congress that deaf people still can't hear. Right? So they're going to need to have something in Braille. And blind people can't see, so they need books on tape. And every three years, everybody has to go and lobby for these things because every three years, they're still true. Three years ago, the Library of Congress opened the door for jailbreaking or rooting your devices, taking them from Apple. Apple controls the software. Apple controls the hardware. And they can tell you what you can and can't do with the software and hardware. So that $650 you paid was just a nice tidy rent. Yeah. So this has nothing to do with actually like, you know, unlocking your bootloader or rooting your phone like some people think. It's, no, it's, no. It's, this it's, isn't it's, going to affect you putting a custom ROM on your phone. This is going to affect you buying a locked AT&T device and trying to switch it to T-Mobile. It's just confusing for some people because a lot of people say, you know, unlock a bootloader or unlock and unlocking a phone or carrier unlock. You know, that because you say unlocked, it's not technically the same thing. But you know, so right. it's always a question of what are you unlocking, right? You say unlock. Do you mean your car door? Do you mean your house? Do you mean your bootloader? Do you mean your carrier locking? What do you mean when you say unlock? There's lots of stuff to unlock. And you can buy unlocked phones, such as the white Nexus 4. Potentially, assuming it's not just sold by T-Mobile. <laughs> like yeah. the black one is only sold by T-Mobile right now. And in, in the other usage case, you, you got like Verizon, which you can move a Verizon phone to Sprint, but it's going to be kind of okay. limited by the, I mean, what... You're going to buy Verizon, which is the worst edition of any of the phones that would come to any carriers with a locked bootloader and move it to Sprint? I mean, no. I can't see a lot of people doing that. So it's a pain. It's possible, but it's a pain. It's possible. It's just not worth it. So I just don't see it being a huge use. You know what I mean? I don't think it's going to affect a lot of people, but it's still the legislature itself is crap. But Yeah. So, you know, speaking about the legislature being crap, the same week that it became illegal to do this in the United States, Canada, our cousins up north, decided that we should propose legislature to have all carriers unlock 
all devices for free if a user you know, suggests it. So Canada's doing it right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously Canada just loves piracy. That's the, yep. that's the, that's the only explanation. They're there to steal our prescription drugs, and now they want our movies and music too. Those heathens upstairs. <laughs> America uh, Junior. America's troll cap. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's yeah, yeah. That, that's you know, you've commonly heard uh, Canada referred to as America's hat. No, it's it's America's troll cap. You know that that's what it is. All right, so so let's talk about a little bit of ecosystem news here before we wrap up. Um, it's more along the lines of you know Samsung and HTC news, but hey, it it deals with Android as a whole. So Samsung was announced to be the top mobile vendor in the U.S. for 2012. They sold more mobile phones than any any other manufacturer. They actually remained king of the market with a massive 53% market share. So 53% of all mobile phones sold in 2012 were all, in the U.S. were Samsung devices. That includes dumb phones. And that does include dumb phones, but right. still, Samsung is king. I, oh, yeah. I mean, that's massive. Half I don't the care. phones sold in the country were made by Samsung. Yeah, and that includes dumb phones, low-end phones, mid-grade wow. phones, as well as high-end phones. And number two, second place, was Apple at 43.7%. So about a ten percent difference, but Apple only sells you know high end you know phones you know the the iPhone. So as uh, well, it sells as, the old iPhones and pretends that they're low end phones. Oh, there you go. Okay, you're right. And, and to be so, fair, they sell a crap load of those older ones too. Oh yeah, yeah, because they 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 knock the price down a lot when a new one comes out. Yes, and they force the carriers to pick up the difference. Because they still charge the carriers the full price that they were the day they went on sale. So Samsung likes the stylus. We know this because of the Note, the Note 2, the Note 10.1, and the rumored upcoming... Note 8, the Note, Note 47, 8. the Note 12, the Note fill-in-the-blank number. Basically, they're <laughs> noting all the things with a pen. Uh, <laughs> And to continue their stance on long live the stylus, they purchased 5% of Wacom. And Wacom. What's that? Wacom, I think. Wacom? Wacom. I don't know how you say it. Wacom. <laughs> so Wacom, Wacom, whatever. They purchased 5% of them. So, so uh, who is Wacom, you might ask? Well, they're pretty much what's the considered the... Maker. The industry standard for digital drawing tablets. Basically, if you're an artist and you draw digitally, chances are you have one of these tablets. Yep. Chances so, are if you run Linux, you've seen a plugin for Wacom tablets too, because it's there by default on Ubuntu and several other distros. Yeah, it is. So yeah, they're they're ex they're extremely useful actually. Oh, it's yeah. like a, it's a black slate. You have a pen, and it's very responsive. So, like you said, um, drawing tablets, you you can draw with those. But they're also really good for really quick usage if you need to do things really quick like video edit. So interesting, you know, they they purchased uh, you know 5% of uh, the company. Uh, obviously, they have some motive behind it. I mean, they have tablets uh, that you can draw on, you know, that there has to be some correlation there. Somebody was thinking something along those lines. Do you guys have any thoughts on uh, why they're backing this at all? Just besides, hey, you guys are doing it well, we're going to do it too. We're going to help you out. Throw some money your way. It's the beginning of a very tiny. It's a tiny beginning of a of a, of a takeover. <laughs> <laughs> Small steps. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think yeah. it's it's an investment in their future products. They want to make sure that Wacom has money, because they want to make sure that they have a reliable supply of these these styli. Yeah, and if there's anybody that they could go to for really good stylus technology, it is Wacom. It really yeah. is. You know, the thing is, I should really remember this better because it was me who wrote a story on it, <laughs> but uh, somebody was patenting basically what looked like an alternative to the S Pen that had a ball on the tip that would provide kind of tactile feedback 
to give you more of a feeling of writing on paper or uh, I remember one of the things they mentioned in the patent was using it for games to be able to provide resistance from the stylus and maybe that could have something to do with Samsung's interest in Wacom but I don't know about the other way around what's in it for them because uh, they seem Cash. to be doing pretty well anyway Cash yeah. money. The other thing I think is who says no to billions of dollars? Yeah. So Very some like, um, desktop computers are going touch screen, if not, you know, not necessarily primarily touch screen 100% yet. But with Windows 8, you look at the all in ones, and all of them are touch screen enabled. If we ever get to a world where that's the the standard, you know, your stylus is going to be for people using Photoshop. That's going to be your precision tool where it used to be a mouse. So, you know, there's probably still a future for the stylus even in, you know, 10 years from now just for yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, it's all speculation, but, I mean, Samsung does have a computing division, and if they in, in the future they make, like, yeah, touch screens on computers are still not that great, but if you have a good surface for a stylus to go nuts on, then, yeah, um, something like this could lead to a partnership that creates a device like that. So, I did say, oh, go ahead, whoever was about to talk. I was just going to move on to the next topic, but you guys want to still talk about uh, Sammy and their, their styluses, uh, anything related to that, that's fine. What I was going to say is I just I don't really see uh, a stylus on a computer touchscreen uh, just because of, for one, ergonomical concerns, like how hard is it to have a screen that you can look at and also draw on with a pen that you can use for everyday work. I mean, I know, for example, artists will have a, a, thing, a display laid back, but I can't really imagine, for example, typing or editing video on a display like that. And if you have it upright, I'm having a hard time imagining a stylus on that as well. I but, guess I was, I guess I was imagining like a yoga, so it goes, so it flips all the way back, and then you can do what you need on it, like kind of like a tablet. They, I know they've tried yeah. to do that before, but it's not great. So no, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. It's nice how the segment has come for full circle back from you know a decade ago when tablets started being made, not when the iPad came out. Contrary to what Apple would have you believe, there were tablets before that decade before that when they all had styluses like this yep and that was that was the interface mechanism yeah, well that's what people criticized about the first note too is like wait a stylus again yeah good technology never dies i guess so let's uh, move on and talk about another thing from the android ecosystem the android community this week uh, we had clarification about last week's Cease and desist takedown of htcruu.com, and, and basically what we speculated on the show last week turns out to that that's kind of truthful. Um, HTC was just protecting their name, their trademark. The, it wasn't because the site in question provided custom ROMs or even RUUs. It was because the site had HTC in the domain name. It used HTC logos, and it was made to look like an official HTC site. So they didn't want to confuse customers. I mean, it makes perfect sense. I, I'm yeah. okay with that explanation. They didn't no. attack the dev community like so many people thought. No, absolutely. I mean, from the outset, I've, I've seen htcruu.com before, right? Like, I'm, I'm familiar with the website. From the outset, when HTC went after them, I wasn't surprised. It was obviously trademark infringement. Yeah. Like, everybody was freaking out about how they're going after the dev community. They didn't care about the guy distributing the RUUs. They cared about the guy using their logo and using their name. Right? Distribute whatever you want. It's freely accessible. They distribute it on their website. And then making so money off of that. Whatever you want. That's fine. But don't do it under their name. That's illegal. Of course they're going to go after you for trademark infringement. That's a lot of work to, like, really try to make your site look like an HTC official website, too. Like, yeah. Yeah, why waste your time with that? Make it look like your own thing. Make it obvious what you're doing. Don't try and trade on their name, though. I agree. All right, so let's talk about rooting and ramen real quick. Uh, so, CM Cyanogen Mod released uh, two 
updates th this week uh, to uh, existing uh, apps. The, uh, the the phone app received a, a major update. It it now gets call log statistics a lot more than the stock statistics. Uh, it's pretty neat. You want to check it out on uh, latest nightly. If you've got anything in the past couple days, you you probably actually have the new nightly the new uh, phone app with statistics uh, built in, and you also probably have the new Chronos, uh, which is the weather calendar clock widget all in one. It's not called Chronos anymore. It's called Clock or C Lock, I, you know, however you want to call it. Uh, the background on that is they got they they were sent cease and desist uh, to stop using Chronos because it was very similar to Cronus, which was a trademarked uh, name and they don't do anything similar. They're not related at all. They're, not, they're spelled similar and sound similar. I thought that they, it was the same name, just not at all the same thing. No, it was, it was, it was Cron there, there was an H versus not an H. Personally, I think they should have just changed to do Kronos with a K. Yeah, Instead, there you we're go. going but, but, Roman but way, spelling, not Greek. But but you know what? It, it makes sense now calling it clock or C lock because it's a yeah. you know, it's a clock on a lock screen. It's kind of like a play on words. It's and you know it doesn't really matter what they call it in my yeah. opinion. It, it's a it's a very cool widget that starts out as a clock. If you expand it, you know and you know you can uh, drag you know around the screen and to expand the widget. If you expand it, make it bigger. Boom! Here comes weather. You expand it even more. Boom! Here comes upcoming calendar reminder. So it's a very cool widget. Uh, you know what? Uh, who cares what it's called? Either way, it got a new name. I don't see why anybody was upset in the first place, especially when you have 75 things called carbon right now and all of them <laughs> seem to be getting along fine. Well, you know, yeah, it's because somebody had a trademark and wanted to feel special about themselves. <laughs> that's pretty much all that, that's all that it was. Somebody, somebody had a bad day and they wanted yeah, to feel good about it's themselves. It's no different than Apple. We're going to whine because you over there are more popular than us and we feel sad and pathetic. So I'm going to run my mouth about these patents until you stop and, and you know admit that I'm better than you because I feel bad about myself. S somebody did something to their Cheerios, you know? Yep. Uh, and last but not least, on the Rootin' and Ramen front, the Verizon Galaxy Note 2 and the Sprint Galaxy Note 2 now have official Cyanogen Mod 10.1 nightlies. Jonathan Franklin, are you running one? Not currently. I'm giving it a little bit more time to bake because... Okay. Yeah, All right, well... If it's, it's I'm still curious. got some issues, and going back and forth between 4.2 and 4.1 is kind of a pain because of the multi-user stuff, so... All right, well, let me know here in the near future. I'm sure you'll eventually flash it, so let me know here in yeah, the future. I'll move to it pretty soon. I just can't. Right. Uh, I have to... Okay, all right. So, so Dan, you want to wrap up here with hating on patents in our, in our patent wars segment, as, as you always love to talk about? Yeah, so we remember initially there had been a preliminary injunction issued against the Galaxy Nexus, and this is for the... Apple versus Samsung 2 trial, the one that is just starting now. Um, Apple had, had been issued that injunction, and then Samsung appealed. The appeals court, the way it works is they don't actually, like the entire court doesn't hear every appeal. They'll issue some smaller group to hear it. And so the three-person panel that heard the original appeal unanimously decided to throw out the injunction. Apple then appealed that decision to the full court, basically asking for the entire panel, all, I think it's nine or maybe 12 judges instead of just three, to hear their case, and that was resoundingly rejected. Um, they decided to not hear it at all. Basically, Apple was suggesting that the appeals court was creating new precedent, and so that deserved a further hearing. Um, and by rejecting that argument, the the full panel basically agreed with Samsung's view that no, Apple's just dumb and doesn't understand the law here because the appeals court didn't create any new standards at all. They just actually applied them, which the original judge did not bother doing. And that same standard that was set by the appeals court was used by that lesser that lower court judge in the Apple one later post-trial bickering uh, to uphold not 
expanding the damages that Samsung had to pay and to uphold not issuing injunctions for their infringement. So it is very sound legal ground. It's just that Apple apparently doesn't understand the law. <laughs> you know, I've thought for a while, Dan, that they don't understand the law. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I mean, that's that's it's quickly becoming that, is that they just don't understand the law. I mean, when you look at, you know, Google had to make this weak deal with the FCC to get out of, or FTC to get out of potential antitrust stuff. And what they gave up was saying that we're not going to seek infringement or seek injunctions on people infringing Fran patents, but there's still exceptions to that. For example, people that refuse to take a license at any fee, you can still seek an injunction against them because they're refusing to take a license no matter what that license is. Gee, what did Apple say to the court just recently? Oh, that's right. They said that they refused to take a license at any rate. <laughs> so Google's still free to seek injunctions against Apple for Fran patents because Apple refuses to follow the law. I mean, it's, it's just getting ridiculous, and the ground is quickly falling out from underneath them. As, as they keep appealing these decisions, it just gets worse for them. If they try and appeal this one again, which they do have the right to do, they can try and appeal it to the Supreme Court, but that's not going to go their way. And it's likely to go their way a lot more harshly than just not being heard. Well, I... I'm curious, you know, how that pans out in the in the near future. I, I'd like to, you know, like to see Apple get a taste of their own medicine, but fingers are we, crossed. Are we, we even, tie. are we even at all surprised that that's happening, that the ground's kind of coming no. out from under them, no, honestly? Because they try so hard to, to do something that everyone is honestly just becoming tired of, yep. you know? Yeah, and the Supreme Court has a lot of leeway in terms of sort of what they can do with a case when they decide to hear it. Yeah. Right? The appeals court is deciding a relatively narrow issue of whether or not this this particular injunction can stand for the particular reasons that are in front of them. If Apple appeals it to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court decides to pick it up, they could very well expand that to a much broader range of issues that are at hand in these trials. And you know, start going into patent validity questions and start going into particular litigation practices when it comes to patent cases and do something like, say, force a USPTO review on patents before allowing a trial to be held on those patents because otherwise we run into problems like the Apple versus Samsung One case where the jury awards, you know, nobody can really figure out how much money based on infringement on this particular patent that after the trial we come to find out wasn't valid in the first place. Okay. So... I'd like to, on a personal note, close up here by saying that, Wookie, our droid DNA now has a quote-unquote working Cyanogen Mod uh, unofficial ROM. Now, it's called a working ROM, but I'm just going to say that means it boots. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it should really be called a booting ROM because... I'll give you a rundown of what works. The display. Good to know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I didn't. I didn't freeze there. I, that, I mean. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so the the real with, with the radio interface library. The radio radio doesn't work, which means no data. Um, there's no sensors that work. There's no Wi-Fi. Basically, you boot it up, and you're like, all right, cool. No, no. I mean, that, that's about it. Uh, but you, you have to start somewhere. I'm not knocking the dev. Oh, yeah. uh, obviously, you know, Drew, uh, Drew X2, keep doing everything you're doing. And uh, you and uh, everybody else working on all the other devs working on it, keep doing everything you're doing. I can't wait to run Signage Mod on the DNA. Um, no, neither can I. It's just, it's just funny that people were flashing this and I'm like, hey, I can't get you know stuff to work, you know, but <laughs> you know, right in the it's work in progress. It's a work in progress, you know. People, hey, I can't get Wi Fi to work. What do I need to flash uh, you know like no, no <laughs> nothing works yet. Like but yeah. it, give it another two weeks or so and, and we'll you know I'm sure they'll have everything working. At, at, fingers crossed, you know? Yeah. I remember the first time I flashed the first 
quasi working AOSP based ROM on my Evo like two and a half years ago, <laughs> and nothing worked. No data, no Wi-Fi. The display worked. You could kind of get touch to work sometimes, but just everything was broken. <laughs> that was like pre Cyanogen Mod six. <laughs> Yeah, so eventually devs do what they do best. You know, they get stuff to work. We just got to give them time. So if you have the DNA, you're watching this, you're listening to this, just wait. I'll let you know, trust me. The moment it becomes workable to use as a daily driver, I will scream from the heavens and let everybody know that it is time to flash. It is time to have a senseless, an AOSP ROM for an amazing piece of hardware. All right, so... Where can you find us every week when we're not live on air? You can find us at androidauthority.com. You can find us on YouTube, which is youtube.com slash androidauthority. You can find us on SoundCloud, which is soundcloud.com slash androidauthority. On Twitter, Android Auth, as well as the place I hate, Facebook. And the place I love, Google+. So find us out on the Internet. Find us somewhere. Listen to us on the show. We are live Every Thursday night normally, except for this week, the stars were not aligning, so we couldn't uh, do the show Thursday night, but we're glad we could give you a show before the weekend was over. John, thanks for coming. Dan, thanks for coming. Josh, great to see you again, my friend. Wookie, yep. oh, I hate you. No, I'm just kidding. Wookie, I love you, man. Great to see you, buddy. <laughs> All right, thanks, have a good night, guys. Us.